All right, the life of a star begins with something called a nebula. And actually, um, just a portion of the nebula. Nebulas are so enormous, and uh, you know, it just takes a, a portion of that nebula to create a star. Um, so it starts with a nebula, which is comprised of dust, the books will say, and gas. And the gas is, of course, in the form of hydrogen. And so we start off with um, dust particles and, and hydrogen in, in, the, in space. And the force of gravity will kind of pack all this dust and gas and force it into um, kind of one shape like this. Like pulls it into a sphere. And then the dust cloud is spinning around, spinning around like that. And so gravity pulls it in and creates something called a protostar. And the protostar, because of its, its rotation and its, its, um, and its pull of gravity, um, crashes those hydrogen uh, molecules, hydrogen atoms, and it's hot enough where the hydrogen will fuse into helium and form a new element. And this is the process of nuclear fusion. And nuclear fusion is the thing that gives a star all of its energy. And from that nuclear fusion and that energy that it gives off, we get to a star. And this stage would be called the main sequence of the star. It's the current stage that our own sun is in, the main sequence. And um, in class, I equate it kind of to the adulthood of the star, where you know it, we spend most of our life a, as an adult. And so um, a star spends most of its life in the main sequence. OK, so we have the main sequence. And after billions and billions of years we start to start to run out of hydrogen okay we've been burning it up for burning for billions of years and we're starting to run out and what's happening here change colors what's happening here is that all the hydrogen is converting into helium and the helium is creating is is, is going into the core of it and um, the hydrogen gases are expanding out and you end up having the expansion of the gases and the gas is cooling down or the star itself cooling down and you end up with a red giant red giant and it's red because it's cooler all right, so it expands, it cools off, and it changes color. And if you, you remember from um, the colors of the spectrum, you have red on one side, and you'll find blue on the opposite side of the spectrum. And you know the red, the red um, waves are slower, less energy, and the blue waves have a lot of energy so you can think of it like that and the blue star with you know the the high energy waves is going to be much hotter and the the red star with slow waves is going to be cool okay all right so moving on so we get to the point here where um, we've got a red giant and we're you know we've pretty much used we're using up all the hydrogen and it's getting really hot in this core and so now we're using the helium to do fusion to nu do nuclear fusion and the helium is combining and fusing and they're making carbon and so we've gone from hydrogen to helium and now we're fusing helium to create carbon and so to continue we have we're we're basically running out of fuel, right? We're burning up all the hydrogen, and that's all gone, basically. And then after a time, we're going to burn up all the helium. And so you end up 
with all these gases and gravity reducing and all these gases escaping. And you end up with these gases creating these big huge gas rings illuminated by the core and you get some some pretty wild colors I think at least that's what the book says I guess with an inner core it's pretty much run out of energy alright and this is called a planetary nebula all right and then the last step we go from the planetary nebula to the point where these gases are gone and you you end up with this this dead core all right this leftover shell of what what the star used to be and so gravity pulls it in and it, it, it starts to get stable again because of all the electrons inside there and it kind of, um, I don't know, it, it, the electrons create a core for itself so that the gravity doesn't just completely implode the star. And you end up with something called a white dwarf. And a white dwarf's pretty, pretty weird. It could, you know, if, if this was, it could be the size of Earth, but at the same time it'll be like 3,000 times the mass of Earth and so you get crazy amounts of, of gravity with this with this white dwarf and it'll it'll stay a white dwarf I think almost indefinitely um, because it's it's such a uh, in a stable state where it doesn't need any nuclear fusion it doesn't need any fuel to exist all right, so that is the life cycle of a low mass star. So to review, we start out with a nebula and goes to a protostar where we have this thing called nuclear fusion begin and it creates the main stage of the star, which is the main sequence. And then uh, it starts to burn up its hydrogen, the gases expand, we end up with a red giant which is cooler, uh, the helium starts to create carbon and the gases continue to float away we end up with something called a planetary nebula and what's left over is this thing called a white dwarf Okay, so that's a life cycle of a low-mass star. Hope to see you on the next one about high-mass stars.